like never before, God. We ask that you release your glory. Release your glory, Lord. Release your glory, Lord.
you are so moved with the love of Jesus. so moved with the love and love of Jesus. And the worship also worship the Lord. I see God is growing you in grace Amen. as you learn faithful skills. I decree and declare over all of you that every time you worship realm of the spirit and the natural. It is prophetic worship. And I want to decree and declare over you as well. Be open for the sound of the Lord in the midst of the worship. Leave room for prophetic utterances. There's a shift it's going to begin in the worship. It's going to begin in the worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Jason, I want you to come now before we close off today. The last time my husband and I um, were here, it was in November 2017. I just want to get the, the digits correct. But I do know that there is a seven year timeline. Mm -hmm. Seven years. Oh my God. The minute that. Sevens just happened to be God's perfect number. Everlasting Life Christian Center is about to step into her fullness. How many of you want to be part of that fullness? So that's why I need the exact date. I want to make sure that we cross that over. I'm picking up in my spirit that we have. So it's time to cross over and step in. When Jacob went to possess, now I haven't even touched my word just yet. This is prophetic utterance here. It's what? Prophetic voice. Oh. I promise you, sir, I will honor your time. There's a supernatural extension onto the time that I was given to now facilitate. My mouth becomes a gate for God right now. So bear with me. I have you on your feet because, you see, there's going to be a heat that's going to come upon you and you will jump up anyway. So let me just allow this to happen now. If you sleep through the worship, you slept through communion, don't sleep now. Please don't. You agitated, listen, you agitated heaven enough for a response today. You've been agitating that cloud since Friday. And as the man of God said yesterday, there's a what? A what? So we're on day three. Something happens on day three. Three reservoirs. Uh, there's a resurrection power that's going to be hitting this place, my God. 
every dead thing that is in your life is about to come alive in the name of Jesus, my God. Some of you, I want you to begin to hold on to your handbag or your wallet, my God, and begin to prophesy, my God, everything dead in your finances, in your health, in your marriage, my God, is about to come alive, my God, like the dry bones. You might be in a valley. Eh. I don't know what lie the enemy has been telling you. But the very breath, the ruah of God is going to set this place alive and on fire today. Could you read that scripture for me? Come, son. Just in case the enemy wants to act up. We just took communion, right? Okay, so listen to this. Galatians 6, 17. And he's reading the Amplified. Read it for me, son. From now on, let no one trouble me by making it necessary for me to justify my authority as an apostle, and the absolute truth of the gospel. For I bear on my body the branding marks of Jesus, the wounds, scars, and other outward evidence of persecution. These testify to his ownership of me. So, devil, I've made my announcement. I've made my announcement. I bear in my body the mark of the blood of the Lamb of God. I'm a no-go area to the kingdom of darkness. And I speak that over you as well. You have partake in the covenant of God. And so therefore, we are all no-go area to the kingdom of don't let the enemy intimidate you. But know in your knowing that you have been redeemed. Say, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Okay. Thank you so much. You may take your seats now. apostolic teacher by delivery. So I'm going to be in between lanes today. Is that okay with you? I'm going to be in between lanes today. Um, and I also have to navigate my way through this thing. So we have some slides. I'm going to ask you to put up the first slide for me. Exodus 19, 5 to 6. Now there are some specific versions of, this, of the word of God that I like to traverse. And so one of them just happens to be the voice version. And because this is the prophetic voice conference, I'm beginning to release this prophetic word. And it was 11 11. It just switched to one particular 
heaven exactly when he came back. Exactly. So, 111 is showing up again. Amen? So, as we read, we all read together on the count of four, three, four. For now, for now, if you will hear my voice, come on, go. Say, I'm God's treasure. I'm God's priest. We're a covenant people that serve a covenant God. God honors covenants. God honors covenant. Yes? Good. We're going somewhere today. Say, tell your neighbor, we're going somewhere today. So, based on this scripture, we should have what I call an identity statement. These, the scriptures that we have just read, define us as that covenant people. And so it became for us a kind of identity statement as well as an ID. Next slide. So those of you who are taking notes, I try to be very nice. Take, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a slide presenter, but I couldn't do all as much as I would have liked to, but bear with me. I'm going to speak it as clearly as I can because I know sometimes us Trinis, how many Trinis is in the house? You all have, you all have been too conditioned. How many Trinis in the house? Well, all right. How many West Indians in the house? Tuk tuk. So, this is, based on what we just read, this is the identity statement that we have as covenant-keeping people. God's special personal possession. You don't belong to you, you belong to God. How have you been managing his possession? Question. Priests to God who form the basis of his kingdom. You are part of a kingdom. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You are in this world but not of this world. And you are a holy nation set apart for his exclusive service. So in essence, do you belong to God? Do you belong to God? And does he belong to you? Are you in a covenant relationship with him. Because the act that we just did, which is communion, solidifies your covenant with him every single day. That is why it is said as often as you do what? You remember. 
say, I remember. Good. Now, this was a statement that God gave to Moses and by extension, the people of Israel. What a calling that was. Sadly, they did not live up to this high calling. And so it took God to come up with a new covenant, a new plan through Jesus, his only begotten son. Now, as Apostle was talking, I just want to bring this back here. He said that God could have chosen and selected an angel. No. But he wanted to prove to us the love that he has for us. And so it cost him everything. You cost him everything, sister. You cost him everything. Everything. You were so precious, mama, that he gave it all. He gave it all. He gave it all so that you will never know the cost of your son. You, beloved, beautiful. He paid it all for you. When he thought about the old covenant man of God, he thought about you. He said, that's not going to be a good fit for you. I need to come up with a new plan for you. I need to come up with a new plan for you. I need to come up with a new plan for you. I need to come up with a new plan. You see, because he knew that you were going to mess up. And he needed something to continue to speak on your behalf in the courts of heaven. And so this covenant of grace that we so have, that we need to cherish this thing. Every time we sin, think about you sending him to the cross all over again. That should help to stimulate you to think about what you're doing. You see, when we look at the Jewish New Year, and we just came out of it at the end of September, so early October, from the 1st of October to the 4th of October is what we call Rosh Hashanah. Every single time that time comes around, it's an opportunity for us. This particular season, 5785, is the season of King Peace. And you can refer to Revelation 1 6, Revelation 5 10, and 1 Peter 2 9. There is always an opportunity for fresh anointing for those who are expectant. There is always an opportunity for new beginnings. A chance for greater blessings. But most importantly, we must let go of things that has come to you in your life. Some of you, you're holding on to things that are never was, never will be a part of God's plan for your life. You see, you can't step in to the new until you let go. You see, there are some things that every time the season comes around, you get a visit. Oh boy, 
prophetically, I want to speak to somebody here today. If all things going just right, just nice, but you notice or you don't want to notice that every time you step into a new season or a new dimension, someone shows up. Someone shows up. And you know when that visit takes place, what happens? Talk to me. Talk to me. It delays you. It alters your necks. Come on now. It keeps you back. And sometimes they would ask you, what are you doing that for? I like you just so. Say so it's time to change. It's time to shift. It's time to shake off those heavy weights that can listen. Stop running on other people's seasons. Things that have finished, and now I know you're good Christians, and you want to do right by God, right? So, they'd say, ah, give the brothers a chance. Eh? Eh? I'm a work in progress. Let me give the boy a chance now. Let me give the chick a chance now. She's looking good, you know. She, you know, all I need to do is just get her cleaned up. By the time you getting them cleaned up, you're totally messed up, and then you come to apostle for what? But I want to tell you, that was in last season. This new season coming here now, you wouldn't be able to find him. Or find her to clean up your mess. We have trainees in the house. We have whatever. So, we go Trini here now and then. This is the season where every pot will have to stand on its own. sit on the fire, right? Not in that door. Don't want anybody to say that I say words that mm -hmm. let every pot sit on its own fire. Because, you see, this is not time for dial a prayer. This is not the time and the season because the level of the war has increased. In other words, the game has changed. The game has changed. The players remain the same, but because you don't know what time it is, Who you are, because you are, he will change the game on you. He's already working it on you and causing delays and derailment of your prophetic destiny. Let go of things that has come to an end. And embrace the things that are completed in him. The 
because you see, when you come to an area of transition, there is always some dead things that drop off that is no longer part of where you need to go. And some of you, you like to travel heavy. But God is looking for some fly girls and some fly boys in this place. My God, are there any fly girls and fly boys in this house? My God, my God, that you could fly light because you're under the red. Where are the fly boys and the fly girls? And so you're a fly girl or a fly boy, right? What are you doing on the ground? Playing with crows and vultures. Trini, Kobos. Letting crows mess with your mind. Because you see, you're too low down. You see, you, you need to be in an altitude where and let me tell you something your attitude determines your altitude we talk about high places on friday right so why are you explaining yourself if you consider yourself to be an eagle why are you explaining yourself to a tick? Why are you explaining yourself to a crow? Stop messing with those fowls. You see, I tell you a little secret. Eve. She knew this. She would not have had a conversation with something she should have killed. Oh Lord. That's the thing. If we are going to keep pace with this. anointing that is upon your life. Listen, there's a statement I make. The anointing that runs on through my life has cast me far. And it keeps on costing me. So please forgive me. If I manage it well, if I guard it well, <laughs> uh, I don't jump up in every party. I don't dance to every song. Because you see, <laughs> the slightest mistake could delay me in a season that I do not want to. you're a fly girl, when you're a horseman, speed and acceleration is your friend. Hallelujah, my God. Man of God, you don't have time because let me tell you something about eagles and fly girls. You see, when the storm comes, it gives you momentum. How many 
many of you, you're in the midst of a storm. You know what you need to do, right? Oh, my God. Apostle, I wish I could just, the ego is one of my thoughts. You see? We look at storms through the lens of the eye. If we look through the storm through the lens of God, we see it as an opportunity to grow what? Higher. We talk about what? The high places on Friday. So if there is a storm, what commands a storm? A certain dimension of the wind. An eagle, a fly girl and a fly boy uses that wind to spread, to get under the wings, my God. And you begin to fly what? Effortless. Because why? You're in the conditions that are conducive. Some of you, you can't flap your wings because you're on the wrong wind. Oh, Lord Jesus, my God. Life and choices we make sooner or later, we are going to realize that chances do not determine our destinies, it's the choices. Obedience come at a price. And it is what? Sacrifice. Oh, Lord, it's a sacrifice. I can sense some of you under the sound of my voice. Your spirit, your soul is, is being, my God, it's, it's being, uh, uh, um, it's, it's agitating, it's being stirred, it, it's being... My God, but I decree and declare, my God, that your air gates, my God, is now clear, making it conducive so that your spirit, my God, your soul can receive this word and the change, the transformation, and deliverance that you need starts in your soul. Your soul contains your mind, your will, and your emotions. So obedience comes at a price, and it's called sacrifice. Disobedience comes at a cost, and it's called consequences. David sinned. There's a man after God on heart, eh? A man of God? Mm, 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 mm. You know, a lot of people, eh, a lot of preacher, a lot of preachers, pong, um, they would um, talk about how Bathsheba and she tempted the man and da 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 Sheba was in her husband's stand over here. You can be seated. This is my my pride. The woman was outside. Ever stop to think why she was outside taking the bath? Let me educate you on an educated level. In those days, when a woman is having her monthlies, she could not go
You see, when things happen, you have to understand the cultural circumstances surrounding certain things. And so she was doing what she was supposed to do. Or what she was ought to be doing. And the enemy, just like what? In the garden. Could you imagine you are in your own property building and somebody peeping at you? Not once. Not twice. I am sure he must have been doing it for quite a while. You see, he was a man after God's own heart. But he had a problem. A very serious one. And it was called lust. That spirit of lust cost him a couple of things for it. And it ran from generation to generation where incest It didn't run very far. It just ran in the family. Powerful man of God. Solomon, the most, the wisest man in the world. But he had his father's heart. Jesus, my God. He had his father's sin that cost him. And by extension, because he did not fix his mix and fix his mess, it cost the nation. I want to say to you that even now, that level of idolatry that the church faced with Jezebel and all of that came from that sin. Jesus Christ came from that sin. David brought forth the royal seed. And yet, within the corridors of that same family tree, you see, that's when you don't deal with the mess. It passes on to generation to generation. I want to say to you here right now in this house, this apostolic prophetic house, what what is not what is not transformed is transformed. Just give you the justification now. What is not transformed is transferred. When it goes from generation to generation, it upgrades. So, my heart, what am I talking to you about? Becoming a voice that carries on. You run with it. You run with it. I said all of what I said there because when I, I'm sure if I didn't say what I say just now, they all that. When you hear that, you would have been cheering. But now you know what? You're pointing to Christ now. So you're correct. I congratulate you. Honesty is a good thing because you could you could stand up and shout and give me all the hallelujah you want. But God knows in your heart. And I'm not looking for a hallelujah chorus here. Or an amen chorus. I'm looking for heart agreement with God. 2020, the Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar that we follow, 
happen to collide. So collide. Coincide. Eh, there was a convergence. A convergence, sorry. There where there was the two just happened to just come together. And you know what happened there? Twenty-five-seven AZ and twenty-twenty came together. It became the decade, the decade of the pain, which we talk about, right? Good. So it's always good to drop back a little bit and then come in. So before we entered five seven eight zero, there was twenty nineteen and five seven seven nine. That was the decade of I-N, A-Y-I-N, the decade of what? The seeing eye. So the seeing eye now became one with the speaking mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's important for us in this season that we discern when to speak, when to be quiet. It will be a very critical component during the next decade. If the kingdom is going to grow and mature. Some of you, you're in a quiet season. Where you feel as though you're not hearing God. He's forgotten you. His voice is not as loud. And then you realize that you also, you're not getting any opportunity to say anything. We have a cell phone, right? We have a computer, right? Anytime technology has to be upgraded. goes through what? A process of what? Of what? Shut down or pause, right? You have, you can't use it. You can't do anything. And it will tell you, please blink it. Please do not what? So I want to say to you, don't turn it off. He's upgrading you. Say, I'm being retrofitted. Yes. You're not on shutdown. He has not forgotten you. My God. My God. Listen, woman of God. He has you because he is reloading your mouth so that your mouth can become that semi-automatic weapon of precision. You see, you've got to become a sharp shooter. And so please train, woman of God. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I just give you a reason. I'm being retrofitted. Woman of God, you're being retrofitted. My God. Your armor is being Every crack, my God, is being sealed up, my God. You are being, oh, Jesus, Lord, help me here. Some of you, I am literally seeing where you are actually having like a titanium spine being placed inside of you. He is strengthening your backbone of what is ahead. You see, mouth is the expression of breath. Through our mouths, the breath becomes vocalized. The main channel through which breath is exchanged is through the mouth. Thus, the mouth becomes a powerful expression of what? The breath of the Holy Spirit also becomes a powerful expression of 
hawaungwa. So, those of you who have spent a great deal of time seeing what God should have no difficulty in the next decade expressing his thoughts in words and in action. You see, because the eyes is more emphasized than the mouth. Those who are blind will speak what? Ceasing mindless chatter due to what? Blind consumption, man of God. Because what is in your heart is a manifestation. Confession brings what? Possession. I want to say, I can hear what I say. And we all know the woman with the issue of blood, right? In Mark 5. I'm not going there. You know there. You see a person, you see what a person do. <laughs> Where did her breakthrough come first? In what? Her heart. Then her mind got in the game. Then her confession topped it off. So what is stored up in the heart is revealed through the mind. So what's in your heart? You see, she believed in her heart, conceived in her mind, and so she received her miracle. You see, what she said located her in the realm of the spirit, and so it put her in the right place at the right time to do what? Receive her miracle. Some of you, you've been Right here today. You see, every battle is won and fought in the arena of the what? The mind first. And that's why the mind and the heart in the Hebrew happens to be the same thing. Psalm 18:10, the New Living Translation says, For it was I the Lord who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it with good things. You see, as I said, there are some people talking things and speaking things. But the gift of prophecy must be thoroughly scrutinized in prayer. If we are to widen our mouth to speak the word of God in prophecy for the profit of others then we must be sure that we have immersed ourselves in the channel of grace. My God, the channel of grace called prayer and knowing most intimately the divine breath of God through what? The overflowing of the Holy Spirit is in the place. You see, when we get saved, when we get saved, and as I said in this season, as we abide in him, and as we yield, and as we condition ourselves to the Holy Spirit, the more we yield to the Holy Spirit, we are now endowed or empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we have the what? Empowering anointing. So most people flow with all speed. Guess what? You need to turn one to the other. You're going to need an anointing. That is when the kingly anointing comes upon you. But it comes at a cost. That particular anointing comes with a cost. And we know of a few in the Bible who had that. Elisha. By extension, Elijah. So, this is the season where we are priests. The what? The empowering anointing, the abiding anointing. 
is now going to collide with the kingly anointing, which is the dominion anointing. But in order for you to really win, say I'm in my winning season, you need to have all three. So count the cost of the third one, okay? Count the cost of the third one. I want you to declare with me, I am the righteousness of God. As you make that declaration, in this next season, I want you to ask yourself, who is behind me? Who is behind you? Who is behind you? Okay. Let's read Psalm 16, 8 to 11. Can I get some readers? Rest my voice a little. Two readers. Psalm 16, 8 to 11. I'm almost there. Do we have him? You gonna read, sir? Okay. Right behind you. The word of the living God. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory, my inner self rejoices. My body too shall rest and con confidently dwell safely or mm -hmm. in safety. For you will not abandon me to Sheol, the place of the dead. Neither will you suffer your Holy One, your Holy One, to see corruption. One. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So, set the Lord always, not sometimes. Set the Lord always. So authority is a central pillar in the kingdom of God. Do you agree? Heaven and earth were established by the declaration of God. Everything came into being because God what? Spoke it. So everything happened by speech. And because I'm speeding up now, Psalm 33, 6, and Genesis 1, 1. The first utterances came from the pay, the widening of the mouth. So the power of those utterances reminded everything and brought everything into existence. So the powerful word, let there be. What God did is give proactive permission for things to exist. Question. Now the light here is not only absence of darkness, but it is also the yoke-breaking presence of God. As we learned yesterday, the Kabbalah. The liberating essence of truth and the mind transforming potential of every revelation. So when the presence of God, when the power of God enters your domain, enters your sphere, something has to shift. And so there is a manifestation and by extension a demonstration of the power of God. And that's what we've been seeing for the last couple of days. 
everything man has existed because God has given him permission to create. I don't care who say what. But it is within his laws that he has stipulated. You see, they're talking about um, women, um, robots, AI robots going to give birth to babies. And I hope Christ come by there. I don't want to be on the earth with those um, things. Because those things which are created outside of the law of God does not carry the same authority. There are structures, and I'm going to load my mouth with this today. There are structures and mindsets and relationships in existence that cannot stay in place when a declaration from God is placed over. Right authorities bring right alignment. Isn't that so, Apostle? Apostle was sharing with us some things that he had to go to do in a foreign land. And so he had to access his authority in Christ over the territory. And so he spoke from a higher, oh Lord, he just said, Baba. He spoke, my God, his prophetic utterance, his apostolic utterance came from a higher place in the realm of the spirit. And so every demon and their minions and their family had to go. They were dispossessed in the realm of the spirit, my God, so that what the true air could possess. Some of you, there's some demons sitting on your possessions, my God. There's some demons sitting on what was promised. What is going to be your response? And the empowering anointing. Where would that get you, sir? A few people say. On a big show. But you see, something happens when you, when you step into a room. <laughs> you don't have to announce who you are. Every demon in that place know who you are. My God, and they begin to do what? Hit the exit. I don't even think a witch could enter your car park, sir. As a matter of fact, you think they could cross the traffic light? Under the song my, of my voice, those of you who are online and you can hear me, test that therapy. So speech has tremendous power. A king rules with his word. That's why you have to have what? Dominion anointing. An ordinary person also has great power with his mouth. Yes, you do. The words we speak could either lift somebody up, them low, low down. There's a scripture, uh, if somebody could search it and get it for me, that says that <laughs> when you gossip and you bad talk somebody, 
you're literally uh, uh, um, murdering them in the realm of the spirit. Look for it. It's there. I know it's there. I said I didn't put it up in my notes. Yeah, find it for me. Let them hear. Our words create a world, saints of God. So becoming a voice to carry the word is important in this season. How are your words being used at home? Over your children, over your spouse. Yes, I am going there because I'm going there. I just talk about putting you up and then I don't know if I carry it in you down here. How you use your words at home will be how you use them to shape the world around you. Are you speaking words of truth and life or are you speaking words of death and destruction? Consciously and unconsciously. Are you speaking from your priesthood and your kingship or are you speaking Proverbs 18.21 tells us something. Death and life is in the power of our tongue. And they that love it will eat what? The fruit thereof. Psalm 141 verse 3. And I'm reading two versions for you here very quickly. It says, God my mouth, O eternal one. This is the voice version. Control what I say. Keep a careful watch on every word I speak. This is a prayer I pray every single day. Guard the door of my mouth, Father. The Amplified Classic said, Set a guard, O God, before my mouth. Keep watch at the door of my lips. That means even it, if it hit the mind and it hit the heart, don't let it come through the mouth. Let me give you a little secret. Most times, and I'm saying we, most times, you know where the enemy gets his ammunition to use against us? <laughs> oh, I wish I, I wish I could. I wish I could. There are some loose words that are lying in the atmosphere, my God. That is either angels of God could use to execute to favor you, or the enemy is going to use it against you. So, which one is going to work for you? Enemy leaves nothing in the atmosphere. He's good like that. That word you said last week is already <laughs> working on some arrows <laughs> to come at you and your family. My God. And you want to know what it is you do. It's not what you do, it's what you say. You see, saints, heaven is asking the army of God to pray, not to retreat. To guard our mouths, prepare our mouths to be used as a semi-automatic weapon of precision against the camp of the enemy. You see, obedience to Christ is not optional as a disciple of Christ because it is at the very foundation of a disciple. So I don't want you to call yourself a Christian anymore. I want you to start calling.
calling yourself, I'm a disciple of Christ. You see, a disciple does what he says. So instead of receiving God's instructions with resistance, I want you to yield to it immediately. I want you to say this with me. I will yield to it immediately. No matter where God calls me, my answer is a hard yes. Now, heaven is listening to you with this, huh? So be sure that this is what you want. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. You know we know this very well. But I'm going to read the verse. For we walk in this world. We do not fight according to the world rules of warfare. The weapons of the war we are fighting are not of this world, but they are powered by God and effective by tearing down the strongholds erected by his truth. So we need to demolish arguments and ideas. Every high and mighty philosophy, that's where in warfare in what? The high place. Pitches itself against the what? The knowledge of the one true God. Against the knowledge of the word of God. We are taking prisoner of every thought, every emotion. And subduing them into the obedience of the Almighty God. Because why? The world is unprincipled. The message version now. It's a doggy dog word out there. The world doesn't fight there. But if we don't live or fight our battles the way that God has given us, the tools of our trades are for marketing or manipulation. They're not. They're not for marketing or manipulation. They are for demolition. Entire massive corrupt culture. And we are in that present season now. So, we need to use our mouth as a generator. I want to say, I want you to say to me, I want you to say to me, my mouth is a generator. Could you just cue, cue that slide up for me? Our spiritual language is the major key speaking in tongues, that unlocks the door to our spirit and all the attributes and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So your mouth is the generator. Your mouth generates miracle producing power. Your mouth generates prosperity producing power. Your mouth generates prosperity generational blessings. Apostle, I know you're from African culture. So I know you, you guys practice this a lot. You bless. When a child is born into a family, the head matriarch and patriarch of that family must speak a blessing over the child. And they put their money where their mouth Do we do that? Good. Do we, the rest of the congregation, do we do that? Uh oh. Uh oh. You see, a soldier have a spear in hand and a shield on the other. One to defend and the other to fight. Shaka Zulu. When you encounter the enemy, you are met with persecution, opposition, slander, false accusations. So your mouth now has to have that 
power of a generator. You know what a generator does? It fuels what? Power. And the words we speak has to now filter those flaming arrows comes. Have you ever thought of coffee machine have a filter, a washing machine have a filter, a dryer have a filter, so how come your mouth don't have a filter? Filtering the impurities that come into our lives, into our minds. Oh my God, listen. What you feed on. What have you been feeding on is going to come through your mouth. If it doesn't come through your mouth, it comes through another orifice. And I wouldn't mention that. So the more we think with the mind of God and extend his grace towards others, the more we transform ourselves, but it begins where? In the mind. When we take time for godly input, say input. And where did we get that? The study of the word. Not watching the YouTube videos. Meditating on the word. Coming to Bible study. Instead of saying I'll catch it on the YouTube, I'll catch it on the tubes. When we take time for godly input, to study the word, his works, memorize, meditate on his work, and then what? Walk in his peace. All of that. We build stronger pillars. It starts on the inside of us. So our soul and our spirit, you see, because if the body is in charge, the spirit will die. You know when you fast, when you are fasting, you know what you're doing? You're feeding the part of you that matters the most. You're bringing the body and the soul under subjection to the spirit that controls. So fasting is staying away from food, but is feasting on God. I'll leave you with that. So, there's something about Ephesians 6.10, and I'm leaving you with this. Hmm. I'm reading the message version. Ephesians 6.10-12. Fight to the finish. Hmm. Verse 10. And that about wraps it up. Yeah, I'm coming to a close here. God is strong. And he wants you strong. So taking everything the master has set out for well-made weapons of best material. And then put them to use so you'll be able to stand to everything the enemy throws your way. It's no weekend war. That you will walk away from and forget about a couple hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil all of his angels. That word there, strong. <laughs> oh my God. That word there, strong. 
is indonema. It's the Greek word. It means explosive strength, ability, and power. Wow. This is where we get the word dynamite from. This is an explosive power that needs to be deposited in some kind of container. Mm. Some kind of receptacle, a vessel. of this word means that it necessarily must put some type of receiver under to be deposited of this power. Pastor, is this what you want? Is the power that God wants to give to us in this season? Receive a supernatural strength internal deposit of the power of God in your inner man. God is the giver and we are the receptacles into which the power is I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to make some declarations. Hallelujah. Abba Father, I decree and declare by faith that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I am especially made by God to be the container of the Holy Spirit. He lives in me. He fills me. He empowers me to conquer every attack that the enemy tries to bring against me. God knew that I needed this power. And therefore he gave it to me. I boldly confess that I'm filled with the supernatural, wonder-working, dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Karaba Sokorondo Rogo Erebendaraba. Abba Father, I want you to fill us, fill us, fill us, oh God, with this explosive power here today, my God. We want to be your receptacles so that we can receive more power from on high, so that we can extend ourselves and go higher to the higher place, oh God. Fill us with your divine enablement through the power. And the empowerment of the Holy Spirit by God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Continue to play while the music can play. Continue to play. You know, Jesus is the one that is in charge over this ministry. Jesus is the one that is in charge over this conference. While we were sitting and worshiping, I saw angels that were like about 10 feet, 12 feet tall. Their heads were above the door. And as I looked, I saw flags and banners. And I could not understand. I said, I don't understand. Never saw before flags and banners coming in. And then they came in. And when they came I saw an angel come and he took the roof off and there were like some recording angels, water angels, and a balcony was formed in front of the church and they began to write and as I in the spirit asked the Lord, what is this? And the Lord says, each one of them is writing for each one of you. They're recording what is being stated today in the book, a new book for you. They were recording things, they're recording your heart. They were recording what was on your mind and they were recording. And they are still right now recording. And as I continued to look, I just saw angels just came through the wall. They just appeared through the wall. And in my mind, I said, well, 
I saw, uh, I see most of the time the angels come in, but it just came through the walls and they began to stand. And while, you know, uh, she was ministering, uh, all of a sudden, I felt a half of my body most of the time when the presence of the Lord come across us. It's like a wind and I feel my entire body, my paws raising. And I felt half of my body uh, like it was being pulled, like a wind inside was pulling and I couldn't understand a magnet half of my body, and I was saying, I don't understand, is it an angel on half of my body? But it was on my right side, and I said, Lord, what is the right side? And as you quote the scripture, Jesus is saying, I am here on the right side. So this is serious. So what I, I want to say, you know, as a prophet of God, is that Jesus is here. Jesus, the Son of God, the King of Kings, and the King of the King Priests, had set this conference in place before you were born because He knew where you would be born. He knew that you're going to come. Yeah. And the Lord says, everything that you need, healing and deliverance and breakthrough, is going to take place today because He's here. But as I continue to look, then I saw angels with. Uh, uh, armor outside with swords and uh, and the swords it was like, you know, when someone is uh, doing a uh, welding uh, on a steel, the swords were like a blowtorch sword and there were five around the building five was watching outward and five was watching inward and the Lord says, we are here for war we are here for war hallelujah so there's healing taking place right now there's a young man in Africa. He has two other brothers. He's looking right now. He's around 40 years old. Witchcraft was being operated against him. Nothing could happen. He's not looking right now. And the Lord says, Son, your breakthrough is taking place. One of your brothers is in his 20s, and the other one is 10 years younger. The Lord says, Communicate. With this shift, with this ministry, your breakthrough is taking place. There's someone in here, your left ear also was giving you some problems. The Lord says, I'm going to be healing you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So even as we would make the altar call, I just want to follow the instructions of the Lord. The first thing he wants to do is all the children under 12 years, he wants to release an impartation to them. So every child that is under 12, you need to come right now, send them. Every child that is here. And the Lord says, even as the generation X and generation Y, the Lord says, I'm establishing a generation Alpha. Generation Alpha. So if you're 12 and under, the Lord wants you. Take our tithe and offering. Tithe and offering. If you need an envelope, our ushers will give you one. Come on, let's give to support. When you give your tithe, what we do with it is to continue to take care of the expenses for the church, things that we need to do for the glory of God. Amen. Also, for our guests, you know, we do that for that. Amen. Are you ready for? Christmas is going to be powerful. At the end of the service, I will share with you some programs that we have in December. You don't want to miss it. Yes. But uh, we, keep, we keep them busy around here. Yeah, we will keep you busy. We have a lot going on. Amen. Because we're going somewhere. We have a lot going on. While you prepare your tithe and offering, maybe I should tell you, December 22nd, we have Christmas service. And following that, we have Christmas celebration. You're going to love it. We're going to have a little food and fellowship and fun. Amen. It won't be here. This place is too small. <coughs> we're going to get a place, a hall that we're going to celebrate. Amen. So I have elbow room. So we can dance and jump and skip and flip. 
Amen. We're going to celebrate Jesus. The birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it will be service here. Then we'll go to the hall and fellowship. Eat and enjoy the season. Amen. God move in season. Amen. Amen. And then mark your calendar. December 29, 30, 31st. We're going to have Prophetess Kelly with us. For three days. She will be in the house. I want us to finish strong. So we can start stronger. In Jesus' name. The ways to give are here on, um, on the screen. Uh, for Eats are here. And for uh, the people who are watching by Facebook. Through Cash App, Everlasting Life, CC. Everlasting Life, CC. Glory to God. Um, you could, you could go ahead and ask somebody to move over. We don't have to go in the middle. Sometimes it may be hard for the middle. We could just ask some people just to move over, please. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, and um, to, to the website is everlastinglife.org forward slash give. Amen. Amen to PayPal and Zelle. Um, um, uh, pretty soon we may be, we may be thinking about, uh, as people, a couple people asked me about Venmo. Venmo. Anybody ever heard of Venmo? Nobody? Okay. Yeah. Some of them asked me, are you okay? That, do you have Venmo? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe we'll think about Venmo soon. Amen. Glory to God. It's technology. It's technology. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, can you uh, stand with me, please, as we just have a word of prayer? Glory to God. Hallelujah. First of all, is there anyone that needs an envelope? <laughs> I call that. <laughs> anyone that needs an envelope? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Mm. Mm. Glory to God. That's a funny vision. I saw somebody's um envelope took wings and just started flying. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. What is I saw the envelope and the envelope had wings and started going up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What is that? And I'm asking him, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> also, Jacob. You know the story of Jacob. When Jacob pay is tight, what happened? There was a puzzle in heaven. You know, a ladder. You know, see, heaven don't open for nothing. It open for something. And that something is going up. Or something is coming down. So when you pay your time, not only something's going up, something's going up, and something's coming down. In the name of God is rewarding you to do that. It's real, it open. When you honor God, tithe and up is honoring, and honor is divine exchange. If you give, you will receive. If you don't give, you don't receive. But God might give you seed to sow. But thou shalt not eat your seed. And the church say amen. amen. Lift it high to heaven. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. I said the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance. And the Lord give you peace. And let the peace of God reign upon your life. Reign upon your family. Reign upon your possessions. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Bless your people. Empower your people. Let them connect to magnificent grace and magnanimous grace this year before we cross over. Let them see the shadow of things to come. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout! We are dismissed. The Lord bless you. Greet somebody.
before you go, 